going to spend more than half of our time upside down, whether we're passing through it. You don't need, as a gymnast, I, had, I, I could hold a minute handstand pretty much every time. Um, but as, you know, now I still understand where upside down is. I understand where it's, where it's straight. The better you feel upside down, even if it's just holding your handstand up against the wall, the better your back handspring is going to get because you understand where the weight should fall on your hands. And, and that. the biggest problem that I have with people is they don't understand where, what straight is. They kick up and they have a shoulder angle and a back arch. Mm -hmm. So technically, they're in a straight line from the heel to their armpit. Because technically, that's a, you know, if I drop that line down. But to get there, they did this. Okay? So where's the best place to learn how to hold a straight body? Just lie down. Don't overcomplicate things. Okay? While you're rolling, okay, because we talked about doing that, lie flat on the floor. Everybody lie flat. Just watch me with Mary for a second. Sorry. So you're going to lie flat. Now make your body as long as you can. Try to touch the balance beams. Try to touch the parking lot. Okay? Are you breathing? I'm still going to breathe. Okay? So just lie down and try to feel that. Now hold your body that tight. Hold your body that tight and roll to your stomach. Don't try to turn all at one time. One time you go and roll and push long again. Push long. Okay, stop. Okay. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to push down on your shoulders. Are you turning? Your shoulders. Okay? Oh, I'm sorry. Like that. Okay? All right. So now everybody roll over on your stomachs. Have a safe place to roll over on your stomach. Try to hold your body long. Okay? And push your body long. Look at it. Your chin should be on the floor. You're looking at your hands. I, good, good. Okay, relax. Everybody look over here at Mary. So when Mary went, can you go to that bad position? Like, like her shoulders were kind of up a little bit. Like this. If you need somebody to help you, and you're like, I, I need to get my shoulders open. Right? I, I am not a believer. I, I don't believe in like manipulating my gymnast. You know, to, to, I'm never going to like yank up on their leg to get it high or that kind of stuff. That's just that's just not me. But I think it, it, through their shoulders, sometimes they need to understand what open feels like. So I physically kind of grab where I've got like two fingers are in her armpits, which I'm thankful that she's got a sweatshirt on. Okay. <laughs> and I just kind of take her armpits and I'm, I'm, I'm pulling them out. I'm lengthening her body as I'm pushing in. So there's a little roll there. And, and there's, you know, two pounds of pressure. It's not like I'm pushing down. But if you need somebody, if, you're, if your partner's looking at you and they're like, yeah, your shoulders aren't open, you just kind of take it and you roll it out, okay? Ooh, you crack. Okay. <laughs> the next thing that I would do, just stay there, okay? Now, just your fingertips, curl your fingertips, and just have somebody just kind of pull and shake and, and lengthen out your body, okay? Knowing that if I'm lengthening out her body, her body's going to have a tendency to go straight. Where's the next great place to work your handstand? Hanging on a bar. Okay. If you just grab and hang on a bar, okay, and you pull, and you think I'm going to hold my feet together, if you hold your feet together and you're hanging on the bar, you're in an I would call it an inverted handstand. You know, I know that's a double negative, um, but that's really what it is. If I took that shape and I turned it over, what would she be in? She would be in a perfect straight body handstand, or at least perfect for her anthropomorphic shape. She might be a little tighter in her shoulders, okay? She might be a little bit more open, okay? That, that you can't help, but just hanging on the bar. I find that after my own personal workouts, when I'm really tight, I can't wait to just come and hang on a bar. And I just, like, I feel like I might even be 5'7 when I get down, you know? <laughs> like my back opens up, that kind of stuff. Uh, hanging on the bar is super for that handstand shape to help you understand it. My next one, you need a mat and a wall to do. I like, I have the mirrors right next to the floor. So I love doing that here. It'll take me a second, but everybody can kind of come over here. I'm sorry, I didn't block 
on your view. So start off, lie on your back and put your ponytail off the end of the mat. Good. Reach back. Okay. I have to move this thing a little bit. Roll off the mat. Do it again. Okay. Put your hands against the mirror. All right. So move a little bit closer to the mirror. There you go. Okay. Is she in a handstand shape? Yeah. Pretty much great. This could get, try to pull it. Oh, there you go. Okay. So we're in a handstand shape. Let me tell you, relax for a second. My least favorite correction I hear coaches make. Get your ribs in, get your ribs in, get your ribs in. That's bullshit, your ribs can't move. Your ribs are there. <laughs> you cannot get your ribs in, your ribs are there. You can round your body, you can hide your ribs. It is impossible for you to move your ribs. They're <laughs> there, okay? Uh, I'm gonna stand up and straddle again so I can move this back a tiny bit. Okay, good again. Now, look right at your own eyes. Okay, so you see right, so now she's in perfect handstand shape, her head is perfectly neutral. If I took her and tipped her upside down, right side up, whatever you wanna look, she's in a straight body handstand. Same thing lying on your stomach. Okay, now you would look and say, what do we need to go? Get your, yeah, All right? Your eyes should be right between your thumbs, okay? So now we're in that handstand shape. Um, Taking this, okay, come off of this now. We're gonna, it doesn't need to be higher, this mat's just, uh, can you move that out of the way? Yeah. Now the next step, because we're shortening the mat, she has to hold her body tighter in between. Same thing, we're lying across this way. This way? Hands against the mirrors. <laughs> So now we're here and she's gonna have to try to figure out, open this more, that's, okay. We'll close it a little bit. That's, right there is straight. Look at your eyes. Okay, <coughs> now I want you to keep this hand where it is and roll towards me. Come on, <laughs> Mary just learned how to do a blind change. Okay, relax. I'm awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so just rolling. Before you do that anywhere, that she has to understand that handstand shape. Right there. Um, the next part, going into our handstand, now that we understand that handstand shape, is how to stretch long into it. Um, the reason I will tell people we're doing a vaulting handstand or we're doing a floor handstand. The difference is if we're doing a vault handstand, we're just starting with our arms down and stretching them so we're, we're mimicking the underswing that we would need to do at vault or a floor handstand where we're starting with our arms here. Um, the group that I had on floor, I don't like it. I don't like starting here, okay? This is tippy, okay? I like your hands to start at your nose, okay? And I, I'll t we all coach by little white lies, and you know, so I'll tell a kid that's really bad, to, you know, get your hands to your chin, because what happens is they end up coming up. So we'll coach by little white lies. But from here, they will cover their ears. But what happens is as they stretch, they come down into it. If they start here, if I see somebody that's hurtling and their arms are here, I can almost guarantee that they're going to be crooked. That when they hurdle, this happens and it crosses over. But if they hurdle and everything here is pushing forwards, okay? So I try to get them to stop their arms a little sooner. When we're doing, um, are you warmed up enough to do some kick to hand stands? step as you can into a handstand. And now, I want you to do it again. I want you to make sure you step over my foot. Good. See, you have to force your 
yourself to step further than what is comfortable. Your natural gait, your step is going to be about two and a half feet, I guess, three feet. I don't know. Your natural gait's this much. So your natural reaction when you go to kick to a handstand is to only step that far. But that's not going to help you. Okay? You need to stretch further. That's why I did. That's why I did this. You know, stretch, and, and I moved it because she had her natural gait. And when I moved my foot, she's like, oh, because at the same time you don't want the foot to kick up ten feet in the air. It's got to slide across the floor. So if she's thinking she's going to miss my foot and I move my foot, it stays low and stretches out. As her hands touch the floor, the first thing that happens as soon as her hands touch is she has to push through her shoulders. Okay? The, she's pushing down on the floor at 100 pounds, and the floor is pushing up at 100 pounds. We have to figure, she has to push into it. If she sags into it, that's like... It's a lot easier for me to balance that bat on my finger than to balance a piece of cooked spaghetti. Oh. You know, and if it has, if, if, if we have a soft spot in it, it's not going to balance really well. So when you hit the floor, you have to be reacting and pushing into it at the same force that, that you, the, you feel the earth is pushing back up with you. So do an extra long stretch. When I see your hands touch the floor, I want you to push as hard as you can through your shoulders. And stay on the ground. If you jump off the ground, that would be fine, but <laughs> I don't think you will. Okay. What I want, now, I'll coach her. Uh, again, we're looking at this being a theoretical 10 foot a five foot step and five feet from her foot to her hands, okay? What I saw was maybe seven feet and three feet. So from your foot to your hands, I need your hands to stretch out further as well. So long, long. Okay. <laughs> right on you. Um, you shorten the first part. So it, it should be equal. However long, however awkward the first stretch feels, the second stretch should be equally awkward. <laughs> long and long. There. Okay. Now, with your partner, you help your partner find balance. Never just go and grab them and hold them in a handstand unless you're specifically working strength. If you're working strength, hold them, you know, handstand push ups, whatever. Okay. But if you just find them, just kick up, don't worry about the handstand. Okay. If I help her find balance, you can kind of feel it in your fingertips. That's going to be better for her in the long run than me holding her up. <laughs> this is just me being annoying. That was good. Yeah, that her hands could be slightly wider. Um, I, I see this probably more in girls than I do in guys, and I couldn't tell you why. Girls tend to think their shoulders are more narrow, and guys tend to think their shoulders are much wider. <laughs> Your hands need to be shoulder width uh, to this point right here. Okay, to balance, your, this should be your balance point right there. Okay, um, if this is in narrow, you kind of built an upside down pyramid. If it's too wide, you can do it. It's just equally awkward. Right? So remember that this is the point. Uh, stand up. Stand up for a second. Okay. Just feel yourself down. I don't worry about your legs. Hands relax down. I want you to close your eyes. Think about where the weight is pushing in your foot. Can you feel where the weight is pushing down in your foot? Okay, now open up your eyes. When you do your handstand, realize that your hands should mirror what your foot just did. Okay? For me, and I have never done this before, so I, don't, I couldn't give a full crap. Um, but for me, I can feel that the weight is between my big toe and my second toe. That's about where I feel my weight. If I had ice skates on, that's where the blade would be. So when I kick up to handstand, I want the weight right in there, okay? So that's my theory on that. I could be completely wrong. Please, somebody research it and tell me something. Um, you guys can sit back down. Um, when you're tumbling, just as an aside, when you're tumbling forwards, 
it's a little bit more natural for your hands to be turned out slightly. When you're tumbling backwards, it's a little bit more natural for your hands to be turned in slightly. Okay? If your hands are turned in straight to in going backwards, it's going to allow your hands to get back faster. If they're when you're reaching forwards, it'll be the same. That's just how your wrist tends, tends to work. So I try to correct that a lot. Any questions on handstands? Okay. Moving on to things specifically for ball. So let's do your handstand, but under swinging first. So I want you to start with your arms here. Um, have your underarm or symbol pointing right at Brian, more or less. He's not quite in line with you, okay? Because what I don't want is for her to drop. Big, long stretch and a long stretch with the arm. That's fine, that's fine. Um, I, I don't like it when people walk out like that. I'd rather have you forward roll. Um, just as far as building a good gymnastics habit, because turning out, that's not really a good gymnastics habit. That's, that's just me being a jerk, I guess. <laughs> okay. um, so now when your hands hit, block a little bit through your shoulders. And from there, handstand forward roll. This would be something that you should do every day. Okay? Take it and going backwards, okay? the, you obviously, um, beam is just, if you relax for a minute, beam is just a narrow floor. So everything we do on floor, we do on beam. Right? I approach it as a coach the same way. We get up, I'm, I'm uh, fairly aggressive in our tumbling because I believe in the straight as an error principle, and that if you go fast, you're going to go straight. I've seen more people crash trying to go too slow. And I've seen more people crash on jumps because they try to not jump very high. But in reality, the higher you jump, the more time you have to plan your landing or your escape. Um, <laughs> and we've seen that. Like, you've seen, everybody's seen it. When you were looking at gymnastics at, at P&G made of the Olympics where they have the camera above, and you go, how the heck did that kid stay on? Okay, they had legs everywhere. Well, their center stayed over the beam. If your center stays over the beam, you'll be okay. Um, take your fingers, put them like, like right on your sternum, right on your ribs. That part needs to always stay over the beam. Okay, for what it's worth, it's the same width as a block of chalk. So, or the camp logo. Or the camp logo. Yeah, keep the am. This is my back. Okay. My next, my, my, my next <laughs> lesson in tumbling and vault is using a bag. You may want to move. <laughs> <laughs> um, vaulting, vaulting and tumbling, and, um, whether it's on these three events, because uh, uh, beam is tumbling too, it's about velocity. Um, if I throw this back at the floor, at the correct angle, okay, it's going to flip over. Okay. If I want it to flip forward, okay, the bat just did, I don't know, it might have been a double layout, maybe it was just one, I wasn't really counting. Okay? So this bat, let's just say I threw it hard enough for it to do a double layout. What did this bat have to do in order to do a double layout? Did it have to swing its arms? No. Did it have to keep its head in? No, it just had to be a bat. It just had to be straight, okay? Simplify your own corrections. The biggest thing you can do is try to tumble like the bat, okay? Have enough velocity, hit the floor straight. You hit the floor straight, you'll come off straight, okay? And that, that's equally true on vault, whether you're doing a front handspring or back handspring. You hit the board at this angle, okay? The board does the work. You don't have to think about under swinging anything else. You hit the board at this angle with enough velocity, it flips upside down. Now your hands are on the table. You don't have to think about blocking, you just have to be the bat, and it will continue coming off. Um, simplify your life that way by just being that tight. Coaches drive me crazy that talk too much. The correction is be tight, go faster. That's pretty much true on every event. <laughs> okay. Anybody see the movie Old School? Yes. Remember that? When the big guy had to ball, <laughs> run fast, keep your eyes closed. Run, run fast, hit the board, close your eyes. I think that was his correction. That's like 90% right. <laughs> okay? Um, to be a good vaulter, you need to run fast. Everything else will take care of itself. 
everything else will take care of itself. Um, other basics that we that you need to do every day as best you can are back extension rolls, a backward roll for a handstand. If you can, if you cannot back extension roll with straight arms, you can't free hip, you can't giant, and that's a forever thing. All right. Um, the best way to learn that, Mary, my volunteer. What you're going to do is you're going to kick your hands in against you, keep your arms really straight, and I'm going to lower you forward to a candle. Okay. Okay? So pick up. So you're going to hold tight. So if you can have a partner here too, and go over this way, and then try to bring you back up. Okay? That, that's not a hard spot. It was more hard because our material was kind of slipping against each other. She kind of slipped. But you're just bear hugging them. You're not bending, you're not doing anything. You're bending your legs and straightening your legs. So from a coach's standpoint, it's not a difficult, it's not a difficult spot. So go again. You just kind of hug their knees and go over and then come back up. They have to understand that shape. That shape. Um, in a back extension roll, come here. Can you go over? I like these back of your chart. Okay. This needs to be round. Okay. People will round down, round down like over, but see her shoulder blades are still picking up, so it has to round down and in, that way. That has to be very hollow chested, this way. Um, never, don't, don't bend your arms, like it, it's more beneficial for you to miss a back extension roll with straight arms than to make it with bent arms. If you make it with, if you miss it with straight arms, we have something to work on over at Barb's. If you make it with bent arms, that's great. You got one trick on four. You know, so if it's in your routine and you need to make it, I'm not, you know, yeah, that's a different story. But if you're doing this as a basic, do it that way. One of the things we do, this is hard, um, and I wouldn't do a ton of these. Uh, you tend to get rub burn. Not bad. Sit down. Okay. I want you to, well, I'll talk you through it. Hollow rock. Sit through a hollow rock. Now rock up the candle. Okay. And up a little higher. So you're going to get a little weight on your hands. Back down. And now all the way over. Feet together. Feet together. Pipe down. Pipe. Pipe. Good. Okay. Um, so that is, so it's hollow rock, candle, back extension roll, roll back down, back extension roll, pipe down. You can do that off a wedge mat. You can do that with spa. Um, but even if you're just going up and getting just momentary weight on your hands and then rolling back down, you're going to be in good shape than, than if you were to bend. Um, again, if you do a bunch of those, you will get rug burn on your back. So I, we usually do three to five of those a day, but we kind of cap it at that. If you have a, a some of the Newer sting mats, the material on those are a little bit softer, and you can do it on that. The older ones are just as rough as the floor, so they're, they're of no benefit to, uh, to, to roll on or, or throw a t-shirt on or something like that. Um, I don't like back extension roll step downs. I'd rather have you back extension roll pipe down. For me, I'm able to do more things over on bars with it. Um, so we'll go for toe on handstands and soul circles around the bar, just toe ons around the bar. It's always feet together. We'll always do it feet together. It's easier if I have somebody who is not flexible enough to do it in a pipe, it's easier for me to switch them to a straddle than to take everybody from a straddle and then try to teach it to them in a pipe. So you take the, the people that do it in a straddle they're the outliers, not, you know, you, you teach it in a pipe first. And I don't like to teach step down one foot at a time. I always teach both feet at the same time. Um, it's faster. If you were to snap for a back handspring, and like we said, speed is everything. If you were to snap for a back handspring, you would snap with your feet together. So for bars, you would snap with your feet together the same way, keep your feet. It might take you a week or 10 days longer to learn kick cast, pipe both feet onto the bar for a soul circle around the bar. It might take two weeks longer, but in the end, you're gonna have 
a, a bunch of other skills that are easier. You're going to be able to do your hiccup up to the high bar much easier by going two feet on and snapping off than doing a one foot step on unless you have like, like really, really long Corkino legs. Um, she was the only, she was the last one that actually made that skill with her feet apart. Um, look well, everybody else feet together. Any questions on that? Yes. What about people that want to work on a back extension while it's a push-up position? Does that have a place? Oh yeah, as long as your arms are straight. I, it's uh, teaching. That's great, Gina. Thank you. you. Kind of saved me on that. Um, if you're doing your back extension roll to push up, okay, that's how your giant and clear hip are going to start. I never start doing giant to handstand, or clear hip, free hip to handstand, or toe on to handstand. We always come off to that push up shape first. So to do the back extension roll to a push up shape first, I'll even show you what we do after that. Um, Gina, come here. You're gonna have to help me. No, no, no. As I lower her, take a slider and put it under her feet. Okay. Yeah. Could you move from it from like a little because that thing's in the way. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, so Gina, stand on the side. Just do in there. Just do a back Thank you. Okay. Put it down on the feet. And it slides up. Okay. One, it, it's because I don't know her. I don't know Mary that well. I didn't know where it was going to land, and that was actually the first time I actually did a back extension. So now, now I know where she's going to be. Okay. So you're going to do your back extension, and you're going to come over flat. It's not going to go to hand. Okay, and you're gonna put your feet on the slider. I'll still spot. Go. It's well, we missed it a little bit, but we were close. Okay. And we just we do that, and then I'll do it up on a higher mat, so her feet will uh, the sliders on top of a panel mat, and then on top of two panel mats, and we do the same thing with sliding, and then we use the Forrester bar and do the exact same set of drills. Okay. Um, a great drill. Is anybody here shorter than Mary? Yeah. <laughs> Everyone. Everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Can you go back and sit down? That was going to suck for you. Can you do it back and sit down? I don't know. This, this is just a size thing more than anything else. Yeah. You can do it with your collar, but. I, it, yeah, but her hand, I. It's just yeah, kind yeah, of. Yeah. So, what I'd like to see Dom do is the first thing, James, move this way a little bit. The first thing I want to see is her flatten her back into the mat. I don't want her butt to touch the mat. I want her whole body to touch into the mat so it's straight. And your feet are going to stay together. Go. Tip into the mat. Up. Oh. But your feet came up. But was that a beautiful back extension yeah. roll? Yes. That was that was great. And Dom's coming off of a couple injuries, so we're really happy she's she's doing this. Um, so it's one more, you're gonna hold your feet together, or I go get my sticky like, toes. He wants you to pike down. Pike down. Yeah. Oh, pike down. Yeah. Yeah. That's. Okay. Just watch your body. Body tips into the mat. Yeah. Great. Great. Okay. And we would do the same thing with the Forrester bar. And we would follow the same progression of, let, let's say she wasn't as talented as Dom, that we would go to a push-up, to a push-up, to a push-up, okay? Now we're going to handstand. Now we're adding the Forrester bar, and we're going to a push-up, to a push-up, to a push-up, okay? Now we add the slider. Uh, so then you, you add, so then you would do all of these drills and you would add the slider to it. So as they go, then they're stretching out and feeling it all the way through. 
your whole progression for any circling element on bars. Um, doing this with the wedge mat, I like because it gets them to fall back straight. Okay. Um, another thing that you need to do is uh, handstand fall to your stomach. Okay. So kick the handstand about here. And then you're gonna, yeah, your hands are there, so you're going to fall onto your stomach on that. That's a great noise for it to make. Open your armpits up. It has to be fully extended, okay? So relax now. You're never going to gain any speed on the way up on bars. You only gain speed on the way down. And the only way to do that is to be as, as extended and as stretched as you can. This is, again, one of the drills that I kind of have on the side. All right? Any questions on that? Okay, I'm gonna go over and I'm gonna do some flipping basics and again, um, we're going to use the tumble track because it's a little bit easier, but I'll explain what you can do with other things. So, road trip. 